Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on the Distress Ink and Oxide Colour Combination series. We're looking at Wild Honey in this video. So we are going to be comparing Wild Honey to other yellows in the Distress Ink and Oxide range using this colour chart. We're going to be swatching it and doing some colour combinations with it as well that you can use at home. Everything I'm using, which is all the products and the colour charts, is all linked down below for you, so you'll find those all there. And I do have a playlist if you've not come across it and this is the first video you've seen of mine which covers all of the other distress ink and oxide colors too so if you've got one in particular in particular you're thinking of buying maybe you're not sure how to use it you can go and find it there they're all in alphabetical order so first things to do is to swatch wild honey onto some cardstock and i'm going to use white smooth stamping cardstock and this is such a rich gorgeous a bright it's almost an orange it falls within the red uh, sorry the yellows but it's almost an orange and look how juicy and gorgeous that is so it really is sort of a sunflower yellow uh, maybe a bit darker than that a little bit more towards the oranges but let's compare it to others so within my color chart that i've got that you can download and fill in at home with your colors we have got wild honey it's just here now uh, i always tell you that i have laminated my color chart with a matte laminating pouch so that does make these look ever so slightly more frosty and while these are wet they're going to look brighter as well so we've got wild honey there obviously carved pumpkin above it is much more orange a little darker as well scattered straw much paler fossilized amber is not too dissimilar so i think fossilized amber if you don't have wild honey honey maybe one that you can replace it with and try out these combinations with instead and up here with the bright yellows mustard seed is also another one potentially you could use but it is much lighter much more yellow not as orange in there so they it kind of stands alone but there are close ones that you potentially could be replacing it with so kind of a, a nice even color that you don't have to use if you don't want to um but if you want to collect of course we all like the thought of collecting the entire range so mustard seed is one actually that i'm going to be bringing in to the tonal color combination for the first one so i always put mustard seed i say always i always put lighter color at the end which will be my mustard seed and you can see the two really close together now and then I'll be going into the darker colour, which is Rusty Hinge. This is going to give you a nice ombre with Wild Honey in the middle. So coming back to my Wild Honey brush, I'm just going to blend the two together by using small circles and only the ink that's already on the brush. I'm not going to be applying any more ink just here. That's actually blended really beautifully and really easily. I'm just going to give my clear mat here a little bit of a wipe. And I'm going to now go into Rusty Hinge, which is within the browns, but I always consider it a very dark orange. I think it's going to sit quite nicely against Wild Honey. But as I've said before, I don't test these combinations out usually um, until I do them here with you and I'm filming. So sometimes I get some surprises and things don't work in the way that I wanted them to. And sometimes I get some surprises the other way and they, things actually look even better than I thought they were going to look. So just loading up the solid part of the colour first, not worrying about blending, so get that all on there nice and smooth. And now, with what's left on my brush, I'm going to do small circles against that blend line. Because Rusty Hinge is such a strong colour, I'm not going to go too far down into it. I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to bring my Wild Honey, again, with what's on my brush for now, up into Rusty Hinge and see if we can blend it this way without adding more ink ideally you want to use as little ink as possible because you avoid oversaturating the paper with the dye part of the ink there we go i think that's worked pretty well so there we've got the brightness so let's turn it around i like to have the dark at the bottom so it's not top heavy the darkness of the rusty hinge going up into the wild honey which is your mid-tone and then into the brightness of the mustard seed so wild honey is definitely a beautiful mid middle man or middle woman there so let's pop these to the side and let's look at a second color combination using wild honey 
So this one's a little bit brighter. I'm actually going to go into green and yellow, which I don't know how it's going to work. It could be lovely. It could be a disaster. You can find out with me. So let's start with Wild Honey, first of all, on the end. But I always think yellow, green, blue, because they're in the rainbow in those that order, they should, in theory, work quite nicely together. So I'm going to put a good amount of yellow down. Because I'm using such different colours, I'm going to clean my mat, give it a wipe between each one. Then I'm going to go into Lucky Clover, which is a bright, bright green. But it does have a hint of blue in it as well, just a hint. But I'm hoping I can get this blended nicely without needing a middle colour into the yellow. So I'm going to kind of, kind of just creep up to the yellow just there not too much pressure let's just work that in there lightly then come back to what's on my brush and again start on your solid color and start working your way up in small circles always working in small circles to get a nice even blend there there we go it doesn't matter which way around your circles go so we've got a nice sort of olive green in between the two there. And you can already see sort of the blueness of that green. So I'm hoping that will lead nicely into Mermaid Lagoon, which is a beautiful bright blue. So let's do the same here. Let's put the solid colour down. Now I use parchment or vellum to hold my pieces because I find these don't absorb any of the dye very easily from the ink so I'm not going to worry about leaving patches or marks on my blending from the parchment or vellum. If I was to use normal cardstock as a strip that potentially could absorb some of the moisture out of the ink while it's still drying so I just find parchment vellum a little more resistant to that and less damage to the ink blends. Okay so filling in that solid part first again just creeping up to the edge of the blend line there in circles and then I'm going to put a little bit more on because Mermaid Lagoon is such a strong colour and we've kind of lost some of the Lucky Clover through this blend here so I'm going to come back on this part here where I know it's just Lucky Clover colour apply there first and then work my way up into that Mermaid Lagoon always try to work while it's still damp if you can it's going to make it's so much easier. We've got I've now got a beautiful teal between the two. Isn't that stunning? I'm not going to do any more to that actually. I'm going to leave that as it is. And I think they've actually blended really nicely together. So we've got Wild Honey, Lucky Clover and Mermaid Lagoon for that one. So there are two colour combinations for you to try using Wild Honey. If you want to see all the other videos in this series, you can find a playlist just here with everything alphabetical. And I would really love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already, just here. Thank you, everybody. I will see you again very, very soon.